What is coolin'? How is everybody doing? My name's G-Sling, I'm doing my thing, and I hope you are as well as always. And today, oh, we got a surpriser. We got something crazy. And I'm telling you, we are gonna be going through all 32 teams, and we're gonna be doing the rebuild challenge. And how this is all gonna work, we're gonna do like a little point system that I like, that I like to do. So basically, you know, for simplification, I've got a graphic at the end of the video that shows the whole point system with the team and everything like that. But it basically is you get a point per win, you get two points for playoffs, you know, double the points, and then you get five points for a Super Bowl win. But today, we're gonna be doing the Chicago Bears. And with, of course, the updated rosters, which includes the, the draft picks, of course. So Justin Fields is in this. You got the whole team. So. Without further ado, let's go ahead and roll the footage and see how the Bears do. So, here we are, and we got the Chicago Bears. And it all starts with the man, Justin Fields, the quarterback from The Ohio State University. Hopefully going to be leading this team to many Super Bowl wins. But he is here starting off 76 overall. You know, we'll have to wait and see. These are just my rankings and everything like that based on where I would put them. But he's got a hidden development trait there, so we'll have to keep that as a surpriser. Now, at the running back position, you got Khalil Herbert, the draft pick from Virginia Tech. A very good steal, actually. A great draft pick by Ryan Pace there. And then, of course, you still got David Montgomery, Tariq Cohens, and, of course, Daryl Williams. Uh, you know, you got, some, you got some guys here. You got some depth, so uh, nothing too crazy. And at receiver, Anthony Miller in the slot. You got Allen Robinson still here. We're going to kind of try to keep him. You got Darnell Mooney, the stud receiver here. Darnell, we love him. And then, of course, Daz Newsome, the draft pick from UNC, North Carolina. Coming in here at a 69 overall. Going to add some more depth to this roster. And then you've got Cole Clement, who will be starting here for us and at tight end. Now, the offensive line is still looking a little shaky. It's nothing crazy, but maybe we'll go ahead and put Larry Boom, the draft pick from Missouri, out into the starting position here. Hey, why not, right? Let's go ahead and get him starting. We don't, you know, if Eddie's cool and everything, but we're, we're going to roll with Boom. Look for the future there. Uh, you got uh, Elijah Wilkinson. You got Cody Whitehair, James Daniel uh, there at guard. So center, we're in a decent position. And uh, overall, at left tackle, you bring in the man, the madman, the dude who looks like he plays angry. It's Tevin Jenkins. He's going to be our future left tackle. We let Charles Leno go. He's gone. And now it's Tevin Jenkins' role. He's that guy. They feel confident enough, and we do too. So that's our offense, and that's how it's looking. Hopefully, Justin Fields is going to be that leader that we need. Now, on the defense side of the ball, looking at this defensive line, you got Akeem Hicks still in this defense. You got Eddie Goldman, who's coming back from opt-out. And then, you know, Bilal Nichols there, who's a stud as well. So, and defensive line's not too bad. And you also got Kyrus Tunga, who they drafted from BYU, the big no tackle big fierce guy on that defensive line more depth and then you got Mario Edwards Jr. who has yeah, coming off a good season actually and then at corner it's gonna be interesting you know but we pick up Thomas Graham another great steal by Ryan Pace here and what do you get him like in the sixth round which is crazy I don't understand how he fell that far but Thomas Graham in my opinion is going to be a guy to keep an eye out on. He's going to be a guy to keep an eye out on in here as well. And, then of course, you got Jalen Johnson, who they took last year from Utah, another stud who's going to be on this defense. And you still got Desmond Trufant. Now, at safety, it's looking a little bit tricky with Christensen. And then you got Bush. and But Eddie Jackson's a beast, so we at least got him. And then, you know, you got Lucas there. So it's a little bit... Uh, we need to find a running mate to go along with Jackson. But our linebacking core is pretty dang solid. Roquan is the man. And, of course, Khalil Mack, the sack attack is still here with the Bears, and we are going to be keeping him long-term for sure. And Hopefully, he'll be wrecking havoc on this defense, but that is your defense. Now, on to the special teams, which you got to give a little bit of crop, or credit, you know, a little bit of credit to. You can't ignore the special teams. And then here's the specialist unit, and Graham is going to be playing in the slot. Marnie Mooney is going to be playing in the slot on offense, so we've kind of got our slot guys and our rushers, but here we are after the first season now. How do we do? We win 8-8. Eight and eight. Not too bad for Justin Fields in his rookie year. Obviously, this is a team that's set up to win now, so we're trying to set up Justin for the best. And let's take a look at him. We were 8th on offense, and then on defense, let's see, we were 12th. As Justin Fields throws over 4,000 yards, how is the touchdown to interception race? Not too bad. Not too bad for Justin. And he was over 102-point rating. That's not too bad at all for a first year. Uh, 32 touchdowns, 9 interceptions, a little over 4,000 yards for Justin Fields. Andy Dalton got in. What happened? I was like, wait a minute. How did Andy Dalton get in? But maybe he got injured during the game or something like that. But on to 
the running back unit. And David Montgomery goes over for 962 yards, six touchdowns. And you also have Justin Fields who ran for 226 uh, yards, which not unrealistic. I could definitely see him running for more than that. Now, at the receiver position, Darnell Mooney over 1,000 and Allen Robinson over 1,000. Good seasons from both of which. Darnell Mooney, 10 touchdowns. Woo! That's what I'm talking about. On the offensive line, Tevin Jenkins allowed nine sacks. And nothing too crazy there. I mean, you got to look at it. His offensive line still, you never know. But on to the sack numbers. Let's take a look. Khalil Mack only had five and a half. What is going on here? Maybe it was a bad season or whatever. Maybe I'm in the wrong scheme or something like that. We'll have to look at that and switch that up or something like that. But we got interception totals. You have three from Eddie Jackson. Not too bad from Desmond Trufant neither. And then Jalen Johnson having a couple there and Thomas Graham having a pick as well from the slot. Now, the offseason comes and we need to make some decisions. And it starts with A-Rod. Do we want to bring him back? I know he's probably like, hey, you know what? I like being here. Justin Fields is the guy. But first off, let's take a look at some of these other ones because we know Allen Robinson is going to be a little expensive. First off, we need to get Mario Edwards Jr. back because I like Mario Edwards Jr. And he's a good foundational piece here to have on this team as a good rotation guy. We get him back on a three-year deal. Nice to get you back, Mario. Other than that, let's take a look at this group. Now, I made a bit of a mistake with some of these rookies. I forgot to put them on a four-year deal. I'm sorry, but I'll get it fixed and they'll all be worked out. So don't worry about that. I'll get that all taken care of. Now, back to Allen Robinson. Let's get him negotiating. Let's make the phone call. Hey, A-Rod, I know your agent's a little bit tricky, but we don't care, man. We want your, you know, we want you back. I don't, I don't know. We got Justin Fields now. We got you a quarterback. It's time. We need you to run and win the Super Bowl. All right, I just want money, man. I understand. Well, we'll give you some money. We'll give you $100 million over four years. And, oh, man, that's a huge contract. And he's probably like, oh, let's go. That is a monster contract, $25 million a season. He's going to be paid with the best receivers in the league, and that's what what we do here and again we keep these contracts realistic we have to now into the draft and Joseph Nagata the Ohio the uh sorry the Clemson receiver and he is gonna he's just too good I mean I get it we bring Allen Robinson back you got Darnell Mooney but we oh my goodness 78 overall look at the stats I mean they're nuts man we just could not take this guy I saw this guy I was scouting this guy and I'm like you know what I'm saying? It was crazy. And, uh, you know, we didn't have a first-round pick either. So in the second round, we get him. And then in the third round, we go out and get Cade Mays from Tennessee, the offensive lineman, improving the offensive line, which we need help on that right side. So we do that. And we get Cade Mays, who that was a really good pick, too. So you take a look here at our draft. And it all starts with Joseph Nagata, the Clemson receiver. Then you get Cade Mays onto that offensive line. So really helping out Justin Fields, building around the offense, and trying to make sure we got everything there. And then we go a little bit on defense now Sam Mark at corner there and more offensive line help with Marquise Hayes uh, so just trying to make sure that offensive line is keeping Justin Fields upright and we got to do it so other than that though you got Jalen Hart or Jaron Hardy and then Wyatt Huber I guess they made a mistake in the draft class and kept Wyatt Huber and whatever it's cool we'll take a Wyatt Huber but uh, here's here's what we have though now as Justin Fields gets superstar development after winning rookie of the year let's go Justin and then David Montgomery uh, is still going to be our running back our lead back and, uh, you know, nothing too crazy there. As you take a look at the whole running back group, at receiver, Allen Robinson is the man. 92 overall. He's still looking good there. And then just, we slot in Joseph Nagata, who will be taking over for Anthony Miller in the slot. No more Anthony. No more fighting. We're going to try to keep the fighting away. Now, Darnell Mooney gets superstar development upgrade. That's what I'm talking about, Darnell. Up to an 81 overall. So, Darnell Mooney is out here killing it. On to the tight end position, who we let Jimmy Graham go. And we pick up some other dude here. And then on the offensive line, Cade May slotting in there at that right guard position. Now, we got a decision to make because I'm like, you, let's get let's get Marquise Haynes in the starting lineup. And then here's our backup, too, on the offensive line. You got Kendall Lamb, who we pick up as a depth tackle. But Cody White here, he's kind of at this point a little bit expendable, 29 years old. And we were like, okay, let's see what, you know, we still can get some good trade value from from uh, white hair so let's go ahead and take a look here maybe the Bengals, you know trying to help joe burrow out uh we might regret this decision a little bit <laughs> we might do regret it but we get a draft pick there a third round pick from the Bengals, and uh we might be seeing the Bengals here in a little bit i'm just <laughs> just saying i don't want to give anything away but 
we do that and we try to get some more draft capital for the future. Now onto the defense and nothing too much changes on this defensive line. Uh, pretty much keeping it the same uh, in terms of every, I mean really just the same there. Onto the cornerback position, which remains the same except we add, uh, you know, Mark here into this uh, rotation with these guys with Jalen Johnson. Thomas Graham's going to remain in the slot. And then you still got Desmond Trufant here. He's getting a little bit older. We're going to have to look at replacement there. Now at safety, we bring in Will Parks in free agency. So we got him as a quick free agent there, which is always good to kind of, you know, add a little bit of depth there. And then at the linebacking position after Danny Trevathan letting him go, we bring in Alex Singleton as another free agent. Uh, you still got Robert Quinn, who's the way overpaid dude, but that's okay. We got Jeremiah Chuchu as another dude. And then you bring in Tariq Thompson. Eddie Jackson as our stud safety right now. But that is our defense and what we are looking at. So not too many changes for the most part on this defense. We really focused on that offense with Khalil Mack being there. You know, he's that he's that dude. On to the uh, lineup here in terms of the specialists. Thomas Graham, as we're saying in the slot, Nagata is going to be taking over for Anthony Miller in the slot there. And then, of course, we go ahead and get David Montgomery in that full three-down roll. Now, on to the playoffs here. And we don't quite make it here. We're 7-9, and nine, but we're trying to shine and we're trying to do what we can. We got to improve. And unfortunately, we didn't quite improve, but that's okay. Maybe let's take a look at the stats and see because Justin Fields over 4,300 yards. And he was fifth in the league in passing. Not too bad, Justin. And uh, let's take a look here at some more of the detailed information on the stats. Justin Fields, 39 touchdowns, 19 interceptions though. Woo, that's a lot of interceptions. Not the greatest rating either. So at this point, I'm like, uh-oh, is Justin Fields turning into a bust? Please don't tell me Justin Fields is going to be the next Mitchell Trubisky. Uh, let's not let's not mention those words. Now onto the running back uh, situation. David Montgomery, just short of 1,000 again. Onto the receivers. And oh, Joseph and Agata in his first season over 1,000 yards. And then Allen Robinson, almost 1,000. You have Darnell Mooney. Over 800. Cole Komet, not a bad season. 881. That's that's a pretty good year there for a tight end. Solid. And then on the offensive line, whew, everything went to like just crap there. 15 sacks by Tevin Jenkins, and Larry Boone had 15. Oh, that's a rough one, but uh, Justin Fields was running for his life this season. On to the defense, and Akeem Hicks leading the way in sacks. And again, Cleo Mack was down there. Roquan Smith, oh my gosh. Roquan Smith had a heck of a year, dude. Six sacks. I mean, he led the team in tackles, but Khalil Mack really didn't put up a whole ton of sacks. Again, maybe just a scheme thing. On to the interception mark, and we have uh, Roquan again leading the way here. Roquan's a monster. Uh, Thomas Graham oh, had two interceptions, not too bad. Let's go on to the free agent signings, and we got to get back on the phone because we got to get busy. So let's see. We're going to probably let Hakeem Nix go. He's getting a little bit older. But Bilal Nichols is someone I like, and I want to give him a nice contract here. So we're going to give him, you know, we're going to throw him a nice little deal here. Just under $10 million a year. I think that's fair for him. He's kind of, you know, that mid-tier defensive tackle money right there is kind of what we're looking at. And we throw him that. So that's what we're going to try to do in a Dalvin Tomlinson-like, uh, you know, contract. And then James Daniel. We need to bring him back. He is a centerpiece on this offensive line. So we give him a nice big contract. He is coming back. James Daniel, solidify him for the long term. We're letting some of these other guys go. We don't want any fighters on this team. Well, we kind of do, but not that kind of fighter. So let's get into the draft. After we lost some people, we have to make some decisions. So after making a trade, we uh, we go ahead and we're not making a trade, but we are here at 12. And uh, let's see who we got. Oh, look at the safety leading. Look at the top three skills, man. 4-4-2 four, four, out here killing it with the combine time. Look at the, the th top three stats, plus uh, B plus and zone coverage. We're going to take him. We need a safety opposite of Eddie Jackson, and he is a monster. Look at this dude. Six foot one, two oh eight, and uh, look at the stats, man. 90 speed, 78 zone coverage. This dude is a monster. He's going to be a beast pairing alongside. Now, speaking of a trade, we make a trade, and we go ahead and trade up, I think, with what? The Denver Broncos? Yeah, no, sorry. The, yeah, the Denver Broncos. So we send him over a second, a third, and we move up here into the first round to select an edge rusher, Cole Russell. We need to look for a replacement for Robert Quinn, and we do that here with Cole Russell. Pretty good top three skills right there, and he's a 77 overall, uh, mainly a speed rusher, but that's a good pairing to have along with the power of Khalil Mack, and look at those stats. 82 finesse, 86 speed, 88 acceleration. This dude looks like a monster. And then we go and get Kyle Pitts' brother, hopefully. Uh, that would be, actually, probably could be, you never know, but Tevin Pitts, the defensive end, a nose tackle there for this defense, or just kind of a big fella to help out that run game and he looks like a beast so here's our draft picks we go out and get a good solid safety to pair along 
with Eddie Jackson. And then we have to pair along someone with Khalil Mack, the sack attack. So we got Cole Russell, maybe Bill Russell, the relation there. We got all these relations. And now, of course, Kyle Pitts' brother, Tevin Pitts, on that defensive line. This dude looks like a solid defensive line. And then you get some more depth that we, you know, we let the CPU on some of those picks. And now, it was, you know, it is what it is. Maybe, you know, but we're all good there. Now, at the, uh, the uh, you know, the take a look here at the roster before the season. We still got Justin Fields up to an 87 overall. You look at the rest of this roster, Joseph Nagata up to an 81, Allen Robinson an 83. Then you got Darnell Moody, unfortunately loses his superstar development. He's an 84. And then you got Daz up to an 80 or 73, which you can't spell Daz completely because EA hates you. But onto the offensive line here, it pretty much stays, you know, for the most part, the same. Uh, Cade Mays has superstar development. Jenkins loses his superstar development after the 15 sack year. Yeah, I don't blame him. I'm surprised he didn't go down to normal. Uh, let's go on to the defense though now and what we've been able to do. We've changed it up. We go into a 4-3. We said, hey, we need to get Khalil Mack more in the dirt. We need to get him coming after the passer more. He were dropping him into coverage too much. So let's go ahead and uh, make sure he is going to be rushing the passer more. And then you get Cole Russell on the opposite side. So you got, you know, you got that speed to power and everything on that defense. The line's looking good with Eddie Goldman and Bilal Nichols as your two guys. You got Kyrus Tonga and Kyle Pitts' brother on that defensive line as some depth. At corner, we're going to go ahead and get Thomas Graham opposite of Jalen Johnson. Now is the time. We want to get Thomas Graham on the outside. You can put Desmond Trufant in the slot or something like that maybe. I don't know. We'll keep Thomas Graham maybe in the slot. We'll figure something out. On the linebacking core, here it is. Singleton's moving out to the outside there. Uh, so nothing too crazy. We pick up Roquan McMillan in free agency. You got Eddie Jackson pairing along with, of course, that man, Carr. Uh, you know, it's going to be a stud, dude. That dude looks like a monster. So we'll see how that rolls along. But Jason Carr is going to be a beast for us on this defense. Now, special teams. We still got Carlos Santos. We pick up a punter with Ramsey. And then here's our unit. Yeah, let's go ahead and get Thomas Graham in the slot. Why not? We'll, uh, you know, that way he's playing out wide and in the slot on nickel formations. And then, of course, well, not in bold. You know what I'm saying. But here we are in the playoffs. And we are making it. We go on to face the division rival, the Green Bay Packers. I wonder if Aaron Rodgers is still here or if it's Jordan Love. But let's first take a look at the stats. And uh-oh, Justin Fields. We were fourth on offense, so Justin Fields looked like he got injured. Defense, we were seventh. So maybe the adjustments helped out quite a bit. But... Oh, man, Brent Huntley. It's a good thing we picked him up in free agency because he actually played decent. Brent Huntley, 102. He had a better rating than Justin Fields. <laughs> oh, my God, it's crazy. But anyway, Brent Huntley, not too bad coming in there as a backup for Justin Fields getting hurt. Who uh, 24 touchdowns, 10 interceptions. So hopefully he's healthy, though. We still need Justin Fields. I don't know. You know, we're not going to rely on Brent Huntley as much as appreciate him coming in and really doing a good job but on to the running back situation David Montgomery a short of a thousand again just short of it man they really hate giving him a thousand yards or something like that but ooh, Allen Robinson that's why we pay you the big money that's why you're paying pay 25 million a year over 1200 yards and Joseph Nagata exactly at 1000 uh that was pretty cool but anyway on to the sack numbers much better Thank you, Tevin. That is a much better season for you. We can accept that with nine sacks and then boom with uh, eight there. On to the uh, defense and, of course, that man leading the way and tackles Roquan. Now, Khalil Mack is back and he comes out with 17 sacks. That's what we're talking about. Khalil Mack's 13 tackles for a loss. And then also Roquan Smith is just a madman, dude. Six and a half sacks to go along with leading the team in tackles. On to the interception numbers. And, oh, Thomas Graham coming out with four. That's what we need. Thomas Graham coming up big. Four interceptions. Third year breakout. And then Jalen Johnson, another really good one, too. And he gets four there as well. So we had some guys. We had some dudes on the outside making plays. Now let's get into the game and see if we can win. We sim along and we get the job done. We blow out the Packers. We humiliate them. 35 to 13. They're going down, we say. Now, we're on to the New Orleans Saints. The Saints are coming marching in, but we came marching in instead because we win 51 and a 41, a high-scoring, crazy game, and we get the job done. Now, Washington football team, can we beat this team who's probably getting tons of pressure on us, but hopefully our offensive line can stay put. As we get on the board early, it's 3 to nothing. As you see, Washington trying to drive, trying to score, but they they don't. And now, Chicago, we got the ball back, and bam, we are in the end zone. No Emerald out here, but with that being said, Washington trying to answer. They can, with a three-pointer, making it 10 to 3. 
Oh man, Justin Fields getting on the board there, 17 to three. And we are ending this half with another score there. Awesome job there, 20 to three. We've got this, we can't blow it, right? Oh, come on, don't don't let him go. Here we go, we just need to chew some clock, chew clock. Keep running the ball. Washington, oh no, they, they okay, they only get a field goal. Okay, we're okay, we're all right. We got the ball, we're trying to drive. Ah, oh, we got stopped short there of field goal range. Washington, oh, they're driving, ah, oh, they get in the end zone. But they missed the two point conversion or missed the field goal. All right, come on, guys. Oh, don't know how much time, only 16 seconds. How oh, is stopped them at the one. They stopped them at the one, it's crazy. Sam Howell to CJ Johnson for 12 yards in a reminiscent of Tennessee and St. Louis in the Super Bowl. We stop him at the one. Unbelievable as Ron Rivera looks on in disgust. What a crazy finish. Oh my goodness. And Justin Fields pulls off a remarkable win. We win it 20 to 13 over the Washington football team. Stopped at the one. This play is unbelievable. We'll go down in history as one of the craziest plays. Uh, now, you know what we were talking about earlier with that Cody Whitehair trade. Now, now we meet the Cincinnati Bengals in the playoffs and, of course, Joe Burrow, who they get on the board early. This might be something Cody Whitehair is probably going to be pissed. He's going to be out here mauling people because he's not happy. Hopefully, Kyle Pitts' brother can come in and stamp him up. Tevin, come on, we need you. Other than that, though, it's 3-3 three to three as we're in the second quarter. And the Bengals driving, and they go down and score. Joe Burrow gets in the end zone. The Bears, we need to, come on, come on, Bears. We need we need something, but now, you know, they got the ball back, and Joe Burrow's driving, and they go down and score. This is, oh, no, 24-3. to three. This game's getting out of control. Come on, guys. We need something. We need something before the half. Do something, man. And we can't quite do it here. So it's 24 to 3. We're in the second half now. And uh, this is not looking good. Time is not our friend right now. But we get on the board here. 24 to 10. Come on, guys. It's the fourth quarter. We need something. We need a turnover. Nope. Bengals on the board. And it unfortunately is not looking good here. As they get another field goal. And this game is practically over. Well, let's just try to make it respectable and see what we can do. Live to fight another day, but we will be hopefully back. Uh, we are getting on the board there, 34 to 17. We get a two-point conversion, so it's 18, actually. So, uh, yeah, we're going to go ahead and keep driving here. Okay, we're trying to make it a game. Let's get an onside kick. Come on, guys. And uh, unfortunately, we can't. And, yep, it's uh, it's over. And, unfortunately, not on our day. It, we do not win the Super Bowl here, but that's Okay. It's all good. That's how things go. And Joe Burrow is going to be leading this team to a Super Bowl victory. And we really struggled. The turnovers, two interceptions. Joe Burrow just played better. I mean, we had more yards and everything, but 76.2 uh, rating ain't going to get it done. So here we are at the offseason now. And it's that man, Roquan Smith, and there is no way we are letting him go. No way. But first off, Justin Fields is a contract, and we have to go ahead and figure this situation out and we are going to give him the big bucks he's going to be getting paid we're going to try to say 240 million over six years which is 40 million a season so he is going to be getting paid a monster contract and hopefully he accepts this no Dak Prescott right we got to keep it going and yes Justin Fields is back a huge deal that is going to be a huge you know hopefully we'll work out the cap situation we're a little low on cap, but we got to bring Roquan Smith back. And we also were going to look to give him a monster deal. Again, we're trying to keep this as realistic as possible. So we're going to look at this and say, ooh, look at this contract. This is not going to be a cheap one. It's just like, what, 15 to 17 mil a year. Roquan Smith, though, is like, I mean, he's one of our best blitzers, too. So we need him. We get him back on a deal. Other than that, though, we're going to let a lot of these guys go. I do want to bring back Roquan McMillan. Uh, so David Montgomery, same with him. I want to bring Dave, uh, David Montgomery back. I'm a fan of David Montgomery and he's been a good back and we were, we're trying to get him over a thousand yards. Like he needs to get a thousand yard season for us. So hopefully it's a respectable running back contract right there. Like nothing crazy. We're not overpaying. I don't think. So we get David Montgomery back now, Roquan McMillan. I thought he had a good year. So let's go ahead and get him back. We need some help at that linebacking position because we're going to let Alex Singleton go. And you know, we've basically just got Roquan. So we get Raquan McMillan back. 
And then we're gonna probably just let everyone go here. PJ Walker, no. Anyway, let's get to the draft. And speaking of linebacker, we need help. Dominique Saxton, this is gonna be a bit of a reach. He's an early second rounder. We're at the end of the first round. But, uh, you know, decent top three skills, and he is 72 overall. He's ranked 34th, and we get him at 31. So it's not too big of a reach, and he's a solid player, not a crazy speed guy or nothing, but he's a good dude, and we need someone here on that outside to pair along with McMillan and Roquan Smith. So we do that, but we're not done yet. We're going to trade up in the second round because there is a player we have in mind. We trade with the Buffalo Bills, and we are going after a safety, Nolan Stanton, the dude from San Diego State. This dude looks pretty good, good top three skills. He's a projected mid first rounder and we're gonna go ahead and try to take him here and see he's a 75 overall normal development He's a good run support guy. He's gonna be our box safety because I figure on um, We can move some guys around and everything like that when any Jackson's uh, You know free agent or whatnot we can we can do some things So we got we got some things we will figure out but we get uh, Saxton here as a linebacker We get Stan in at there at safety to improve and then other than that It was kind of just uh, looking for best available slash depth we miss on a linebacker pick there, but we also got some decent, we got a fullback, we got a kicker, we got some guys. So here we are now for the next season. What is this, the fourth season now we're going into? And Jacoby Brissett is our backup. As we know, we need a good backup. Justin Fields, though, up to a 91 overall. Our, our running back position is looking a little bit thin now. We, uh, we, we've kind of thinned out a little bit, but we believe in David Montgomery. And then here we are, who Allen Robinson gets superstar X Factor after a really good season. So he's up to a 94 overall. Darnell Mooney, 87. And they got Joseph Nagata up to an 84. And then, of course, you know, got Cole Clement up to a 78. Not too bad. The offensive line, we pick up Morgan Moses as a depth tackle. Uh, Cade Mays is, is still working along here, 84 overall. So we've gotten some progression there. He's moving along pretty fast. Tevin Jenkins up to an 82 overall. Other than that, though, the offensive line stays the same. Again, we really, did, you know, we went offensive line early and we're trying to solidify the offensive line, keep it in a good position. So on to the defense. Khalil Mack has got his superstar X Factor back after a heck of a season. And then here is our, you know, the rest of our group. Tevin Pitts is now going to be getting in that starting role. We love it. We want Kyle Pitts' brother in here. And then you got Kurt Russell in there as that, of course, you know, he's, he's kind of progressing a little bit. So hopefully he can have a good season. At corner, we pick up Rocky on Sin and Free Agency. And then you got, oh, look at this. That's what I'm talking about. Thomas Graham up to superstar development, 84 overall. He had a huge year making the Pro Bowl and Jalen Johnson up to an 86 overall. I believe he made it. I don't know if he made a Pro Bowl or not. But And then you got Carr there, Jason Carr killing it. You got Stanton as a backup safety looking for the future when Eddie Jackson potentially is a free agent in a, in a season or two. And we pick up Levante David off the free agent waiver markets. I'm like, dang, he's just too good. We need a good solid middle linebacker depth. And we get that with Levante David. Here's our new linebacking core. You got Battle is some death piece who we got later in the draft. Saxton there and McMillan. And then at safety, as we're talking about, we pick up Kayvon Wallace there and free agent as well uh, to back up Eddie Jackson. So there's our defense. And I think it's looking pretty good. Honestly, I think it's looking pretty good. And when you got Khalil Mack, that always helps. But our secondary is looking way, way better than it was like a season or two ago. We've got a really good secondary actually now. And then uh, on the defense side of the ball, uh, or sorry, the specialist side of the ball, let's take a uh, That's not really a side of the ball, but you know what I'm saying. Anyway, you got Rocky and Sin. He's going to be playing in the slot. You got Cleo Mack with all Nichols there. Uh, so yeah, nothing too crazy. No, not a big change. Now here we are and we don't make the playoffs. Come on. We went after the Super Bowl. So the Super Bowl slump and unfortunately we do not make the playoffs here. Let's take a look though. Justin feels, you know, fourth in the NFL and he was out of over 4,400 yards on defense. We were 25th. So not good. We took a big step back on defense. Justin feels through 18 interceptions. Oof. What happened, Justin? I don't know. We'll have to take a look. But uh, sack numbers 28. So it's not like he got pressured a whole ton, maybe. But maybe he's just running for his life. David Montgomery, again, short of 1,000 yards. Not a bad average, though. Six touchdowns to go along with that. On to the blocking. Let's take a look. Or sorry, the receiving core real quick. First, I was getting a little bit ahead of myself. On to the receiving unit. And Joseph Nagata leading the way at 1,100 yards. Other than that, though, Allen Robinson, a little bit of a disappointing season. But Cole Komet had a really good year. As my batteries are a little low. I got to get those changed. Come on. Anyway, on to the offensive line now, which we were desperately looking to find. And not too bad, but... I don't know. Whatever happened, man. It's just nothing. We couldn't get anything going. Maybe the defense. Let's take a look. Roquan Smith, no surprise, are leading the way in tackles on to the sack numbers. Cole Russell. 
Woo! Kyle Russell had a big year. That's what we're talking about. Third year, what is he, second year player? Uh, Khalil Mack had a rough year, but yes, he got injured, only played seven games, and so did Cole Russell, too. So they both got injured, which I mean. So, you know, other than that, though, nothing too crazy here, uh, sack numbers wise. Not too bad overall, Khalil Mack, you know, four and a half, considering the injuries and everything. Yeah, Dominique Saxton having four sacks there, rookie. Not too bad on the interception mark number wise. Roquan Smith leading the way. You got Jason Carr coming out here, killing it, and then you know nothing too crazy beyond that. Uh, we're looking across the board, trying to find some rookies and seeing where they were at. But on to the off season now, where we got to make some serious, serious moves because you know we got to get this team, we got to get going here. We got going into the last year, number five of the year, you know, the rebuild. But we got a ton of free agents and a ton of big name free agents. So let's go ahead and try to knock these guys out here. We don't have a ton of cap space, and we're gonna try to keep these contracts as realistic as possible. Uh, Cole Clement, we want to bring back tight end. I like him, and he is coming back on that contract now on the offensive line Tevin Jenkins uh oh this is gonna be a monster contract we know it is but you know what I'm gonna give him mid-tier money because he's kind of been playing mid-tier offense alignment so we're not gonna throw him too crazy I think it'll maybe a little over 10 million is fair here so uh you know that's what kind of what we're going at so around the 12 million mark a season I think that's a fair contract on to Thomas Graham who's gonna be paid quite well he's probably gonna be played kind of that mid-tier corner money as well uh, another dude here who's been really solid coming off to a really good year he might want more than this in real life but we go ahead and give him around a 12 mil a year contract Jalen Johnson uh we ran out of money I think we're gonna run out of money here <laughs> I'm trying to squeeze it I'm like okay come on can we get the job done hey take our contract and nope they don't have enough cap space and we tried both with Darnell Mooney couldn't get it done we lose both of them that's okay we'll figure it out now here we are at uh, the sixth overall pick after that six and ten season and I'm figuring hey let's go ahead and trade down I have a player in mind and I'm like okay we don't you know we don't need to take them at six so uh, you know we're looking at these trade offers and analyzing and going through my microscope and seeing and ultimately we're gonna take the Houston Texans move down to 13 because Luke Hayden look at this man look at the look at the speed look at the coverage I mean look at everything dude this guy is a monster and Oh, let's go! 79 overall. The best corner I think I've ever drafted in Mutt 20, or what is this, Madden 21? I'm losing track of games. They all seem the same. You know what it is. 96 speed, 97 acceleration, 94 agility, 78 man, 73 zone. This guy is a monster. On to a quick little trade, which we are going to be trading back up into the first round with the Denver Broncos. Give up a couple, you know, give up quite a few picks, but we need offensive line help. We let Larry Boom go. We couldn't afford him. So we go out and get Alexander Blue, the right tackle here. Yeah, a little bit low overall wise, but we needed a right tackle and I had to kind of reach down the board a little bit. We needed someone. We get him. Now on to our second round pick here, or our next pick, we're going to be getting Steven Hamels. The linebacker from LSU, I guess he's an edge rusher, but he, we're going to use him as a linebacker. You take a look at his stats. He's got 88 speed, 91 acceleration. Uh, you know, his, his awareness is decent and everything, like good tackling ability, good play rec. We're going to move him to outside linebacker. Uh, he's going to be another dude uh, with this linebacking unit. Uh, we'll figure something out here. So here's our draft. I think it was a really good draft. I really do. And, you know, we go out, get Hayden, like I said, maybe the best corner I've ever drafted. We get a good right tackle, you know, solid. I think he'll be a development guy. You get Hamels there at that linebacking position. Go out and get another receiver, Devontae McLean, maybe Ronnie McLean's brother. Who knows? Or younger. I don't know. It'll be interesting, but we'll see. Anyway, here's the team now. now. Justin Fields is up to a 93 overall. And look who we found on the free agent market. Tom Brady, who's 47 years old. Maybe his wisdom will lead us to a Super Bowl ring. I just had to get it for the good luck vibes, man. I'm Come on. TB12, he's 47 years old. He's probably out here with the cane. Oh. Oh, no, I'm joking. He Tom Brady doesn't need a cane. You kidding me? He's a beast. He's probably going to be starting at some point on this team. <laughs> anyway, uh, we get Devontae Smith in free agency here as that one big pickup to uh, replace what we lost with Darnell Mooney. But you got Joseph Nagata. I think he can step right in and be a solid player. And then you got Cole Komet there. You pick up Jacob Hollister off the waivers. 
Alfred Blue is what we're going to call him. I'm going to call him Alfred Blue, even though you know Alexander Blue. But, we, you know, we got to mess around a little bit. Shout out to Alfred Blue. Alex, you know, we got Alexander here. So there's your offensive line. Stays for the most part the same. On to the defense of the final season. Cole Russell up to an 83 overall. Khalil Mack loses his superstar X Factor after the injured season. But that's okay. Our defensive line still looks pretty good. But we bring in a madman. And I'm telling you, Hayden is going to be starting right away. Luke Hayden is... He, he, this dude, wait till you see, this guy is crazy. I, I bet he's going to be crazy. So we'll have to wait and see how he does. But Thomas Graham, 86 overall. He's looking pretty good. Rocky Ensign stays there. And then, of course, you got Jason Carr up to an 85 overall superstar development. He is a beast about to overtake Eddie Jackson in overall, who's regressing a little bit. Uh, you got Hamels in here at that left outside linebacker position. We move Raekwon McMillan back into inside a linebacker, and he's going to be there with Roquan Smith and his backup there, and then Saxon over at right outside linebacker. So our linebacking position looks better than maybe it has the entirety of this rebuild. On to our specialty unit. You got Hayden, who will be playing in the slot early on, but he'll be playing outside in base coverages, and then Nagata in the slot still. So here we are. We made the playoffs. Woo! That's the half of the battle, right? You get nine and seven. We're taking on the Arizona Cardinals. But first off, let's take a look at the stats. And Justin Fields, 4,500 of big ones, right? Fifth in the league. David Montgomery. Oh, it looks like he got hurt. On to the individual stats or whatever. Let's take a look on Justin Fields. Let's go. 41 touchdowns, eight interceptions for Justin Fields. A great season. 110 point rating. That is what we are talking for. That is what we are looking at. That is an MVP level season. Justin, we needed that. Now, on to the running back group. And as we were saying, David Montgomery did get hurt. Khalil Hub Herbert had to step in there. Uh, struggled quite a bit. He had more carries, a lot more carries, and less yardage than David Montgomery. But that's okay. Joseph Nagata made up for it in a big way. Over 1,300 yards for Nagata. A heck of a season. 11 touchdowns. He was a monster. Cole Komet, almost 1,000 yards. And then Allen Robinson, almost 900 yards. 13 touchdowns. So a ton of touchdowns. So really, I mean... Dude, I mean, it was crazy. Justin Fields was throwing touchdown passes to these guys. Oh, it was just crazy. But Alexander Blue uh, leading the way in sacks, but not too bad. Only eight in his rookie year. I mean, in Madden terms, that's pretty good. On to the defense and Roquan, Mc Roquan Smith. I almost said Roquan McMillan. But Roquan Smith leading the way there in tackles. Khalil Mack back. He had 12 and a half. Was able to stay healthy, which is so huge for us there. And then Bilal Nichols, seven and a half. Stephen Hamels. woo -hoo! Five and a half sacks here off of the linebacking position, off-ball linebacker. You got Pitts with three, and then Cole Russell. We were looking here. Was he get injured? Only one and a half sacks. He was a little bit weak. No, he didn't get injured. Just not a good year there from Cole Russell, but that's okay. Uh, besides that, you got Jared Hardy. Um, let's take a look at the interception numbers, and let's see how our rookie did. But Rocky on San, seven interceptions. Oh, my goodness, out of nowhere. Rocky Unsin had a monster year. That's got to be like defensive player of the year right there. Seven interceptions for Rocky Unsin, killing it. Uh, Hamels had two. He had a really good, I mean, that is five and a half sacks, two interceptions. Oh, man, that's a really good year from Hamels. Uh, Luke Hayden had one interception, had nine pass deflections, so not too bad there. Let's get on to the playoffs now, and let's see what we got. And we, oh, I thought we lost there for a second, but we got the job done versus the Cardinals. 28-21, a little bit of a nail-biter. Now, uh-oh, Tom Brady is still on the roster, and we are facing the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Maybe he can give us the insight because he's mad. And we do get the win! Let's go! Now we are taking on the Minnesota Vikings here in the conference championship early on. We go out and Minnesota is on the board first. They take the lead seven to nothing. But we answer. Justin Fields gets in the end zone and it's seven to seven all. We are tied in the second quarter. Bears have the ball. We're driving. Can we get in the end zone? And yes, we can. Touchdown, 14 to seven. We have the lead in the second quarter, but Minnesota is driving. They are thriving. They're trying to get in the end zone and tie this ball game up. And will they? Yes, they do. They get in the end zone, unfortunately. However, we've got a chance to score before halftime. 
Oh, ball. Wait, we got a quick turnover and a touchdown. Let's go. Huge turnover there. Minnesota turned the ball over and we get on the board before half. Huge play right there. So I uh, don't know who got the big play, but that was a big time play. Now, we're in the second half here. It's 21 to 14 and we are driving. And yeah, touchdown. Let's go. Fourth quarter. Let's try to get, we're trying to get back to the Super Bowl here. And Minnesota gets another field goal. So it's, you know, still a little bit too close. We can't, you know, we're, we're, we're trying to keep this game going here and everything. But we got to ice the game here and a touchdown. This game is practically in the books, barring any sort of Music City miracle, not Music City miracle, or any, you know, Minnesota Vikings miracle, because technically, I mean, we don't need any digs out here. We get the job done, and you know, without, you know, without any controversy here this time, no stopping them at the one. We didn't want to go through that again. And let's take a look at the stats here. So Justin Fields had a pretty big game. I mean, pretty big, five touchdowns, no interceptions. That is the Justin Fields that we need. This play of 130, 134 point some rating. That is a great job by Justin Fields. And here we are in the Super Bowl now with the Buffalo Bills. Oh, this is going to be a tough one. I know it. Josh Allen is not going to be an easy one to take down. So let's see. Last year of this rebuild. So early on, let's go ahead and see. Buffalo has the ball and they're driving, but not quite let's see if we can you know we okay we stop into a field goal not too bad there and now we've got we are we're trying to make something happen but not quite buffalo we get a stop so a couple of quick stops by each team and now it's just kind of a defensive game as we're in the second quarter it's still three to nothing and the buffalo bills get stopped fourth down time to punt we want the ball we want the ball we are going to score and let's see if we do actually get we do get in the end zone first touchdown of the super bowl and it is seven to three our lead now we've got the ball back, and this is going to be an interesting one. We have to punt, though. Buffalo is in the end zone. It is 10 to 7. We're at the end of the second quarter. We're trying to get on the board before half. Unfortunately, it doesn't uh, it doesn't look like we're going to happen there. I think we missed a field goal or something, or we took a sack. Anyway, uh, let's get on to the third quarter in the second half. And the Buffalo Bills are driving. Come on, come on, guys. No! 17 to 7. I don't want to lose another Super Bowl, man. Come on, guys. This is a huge drive. And Justin Fields and this offense leads us into the end zone. A critical, critical drive. We're in the fourth quarter. Come on, guys. We need a stop. And oh, let's go. Our defense comes up clutch. And oh, quick score. Let's go. 21 to 20. Absolute huge. Like that is, if we had to take a look at it, that would be the game like turnaround right there. That could have been 20, you know, 21. That could have been a, a, a 14 point swing right there. And we go score again. Four minutes and 50 some seconds to go. Buffalo's in trouble. But Josh Allen, let's not count Josh Allen. He's driving, he's throwing the ball here. And now, okay, third down and five. Incomplete pass. It's a turnover. Let's go. Huge play by the defense. Now, let's get onto the field. We're going to see here what we can do. Hand off to David Montgomery. Montgomery up the middle. And bam! Huge play, David Montgomery. First down. Huge play. Timeout, Buffalo. It's all. Oh, we will, They only have two, what, two timeouts left. Oh, a huge play. No, one timeout left. David Montgomery with maybe the run of the Super Bowl right there. Huge first down as he breaks two tackles. And now we're just going to pound the ball away here with David Montgomery. Fourth quarter, timeout, Buffalo. That's their last timeout. If we can get one more first down, we seal that game and the Super Bowl. David Montgomery with a run outside to the right. A nice five, six yard gain. It's going to be third and two. Third and three, pardon me. Oh, what are we going to do? We're going to pull out the old school Bears formation right here. And this is a huge play. The Super Bowl on the line. David Montgomery up the middle. First down. We're going to win the Super Bowl. Let's go. We are going to win the Super Bowl here. The Chicago Bears, are, as long as we don't fumble, don't, don't do anything crazy, Justin. Just kneel the ball. This game is almost over. 33 seconds to go. Tick, tick, tick. Let's go. Chris Berman in the background. Final play of the game. The Chicago Bears are going to win the Super Bowl. Well, waiting is over for the Bears over the long drought. And it's over. Let's go. 
wow, we have won the Super Bowl. The Chicago Bears have delivered Justin Fields in the final year, the fifth year of this rebuild. The confetti is coming out, and we get the job done as they pat Josh Allen on the helmet there. Let the confetti fly because the Chicago Bears are Super Bowl champions again, and Justin Fields has led this team here uh, to a Super Bowl win. So... Let's take a look at the stats. Just a crazy game. I was, I'm telling you, that was one of the craziest Super Bowls. Um, I was just <laughs> that David Montgomery one was crazy. But Justin Fields gonna be the MVP here. Onto the running back in David Montgomery had a good game. Joseph Nagata killing it here, 106 yards and a touchdown. So he had a really really good game as well. Offensive line there on to the sack numbers. Nothing crazy. Greg Rousseau's here, um, you know. But other than that, you know, pretty good all around. And then, you know, let's take a look at the roster here, our final roster. And Justin Fields up to a 99 overall with confidence. Tom Brady retired finally. <laughs> uh, Tom Brady was the key. Uh, let's see, though. Justin Fields, 99 overall. Superstar X Factor. David Montgomery gets 88 overall. And Khalil Herbert there is our backup. And then Allen Robinson loses his X Factor. But Nagata gets X Factor. 91 overall with confidence. He was going to be our eventual number one there, basically. He was just, you know, Allen Robinson basically going into a contract year. We probably, you know, would have had to let him go cap space-wise. But it would have been all good. We had Nagata. You got Cole Komet, who, you know, was balling out there. Got a ton of progression. Cade Mays almost to a 90 overall. The offense line looked really, really good. Uh, so just really stout. We were able to stay healthy too, which is huge. Um, you gotta you gotta stay healthy up front to win a Super Bowl, as we've seen with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Chiefs. Onto the defense, Cleo Mack got his superstar X Factor back, and uh, yeah, he was instrumental there in that Super Bowl run. Uh, Kyle Pitts, his brother, you know, you got Cole Russell, uh, just the whole team. And then look at the corner, Luke Hayden, up to an 85 overall with confidence already. Already, this dude, as I was saying, might be the best corner I've ever drafted in my Madden 21. Just an unbelievable player. He would have been a 90 overall like within a season or two and maybe had superstar development if he kept that pace going. Thomas Graham up to an 88. You got Jason Carr up to an 88. He was just another foundation pick there on this defense. Um, Hamels has superstar X Factor, dude. Let's go. He he was monstrous too this season. Uh, Roquan Smith was just a beast throughout our entirety of the rebuild, leading our team like every single season in, sa or in uh, tackles. Um, so... Taking a look at the roster in general, I just I was just going crazy because it, it was just such a we found so many good pieces in the draft and then to pair along with these guys that we had. So we were we, we did get lucky in the draft. We found some some big time steals and some big time studs, but that's what you have to do, man. You have to do it. So let's take a look at the point system now. And with the point system, how it works, you get one point per win. And also, I didn't put this, but you have half a point for a tie because ties do happen in Madden Sim a lot. So uh, no ties, though, in this. You had two, you have two points for a playoff win, and you have five points for a Super Bowl win. So you see basically eight, eight and eight our first year, we get eight points. Seven and nine, we got seven points. We have a total of 15, and so forth, right? You, you know, third year, we had nine and seven. We got three playoff wins. We didn't win a Super Bowl, but, you know, we got 15 points from that because nine plus... Uh, Nine plus, what is it, six or something like that? I can't do math right now. But anyway, we got 30 points there and so forth. You see what I'm saying? To, to finally, in that last season there, we got that Super Bowl win. Woo! And we get a, a total of 56 points. So we'll see where that shakes up. That's a pretty good number. And we will go through all these teams. Now, I will say they would never really got over 10 wins or something like that. But... They, you know, they got a Super Bowl win. They got a lot of playoff wins, too. When you get the, the double points, that's going to really help out your numbers there. So 56 points for the Chicago Bears. A really, really good job for the Chicago Bears. And that was such a fun rebuild, dude. I, I love that one. It was crazy. Justin Fields leads this team to a Super Bowl win. I hope you enjoyed. And you're looking for, you know, let me know which team. Like I said, we'll probably do it in order. But if you want to see a team certain, you know, let me know and everything. But I hope everybody has a really good day. My name's G-Sling. I'm doing my thing, and I hope you do too.